Do you were talking about how silver best performs towards the end of an inflationary period. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people, you know, get to benefit off of that who invested earlier in their time. But how do we go about convincing people that have never invested in precious metals or anything at all to kind of get into the market? Well, the first step from my perspective is to education. It's really hard to tell somebody, you know, anything. Uh, and it's very difficult to get them motivated about money when they have a belief system that's based on a bunch of falsehoods, but they have grown up watching empirical evidence that a green piece of paper is great at Starbucks and it's great for a pair of shoes and it's great for a gallon of gas. And uh, and I have to say, in all honesty, that's, that it works. I mean, it does work, but it's starting to fail or is failing. And so if there was an easy, simple way to show in your movie or for me to say it for you now to get people to understand, then I think we can look at something tangible. Rather than make something up hypothetically, if you go back to Zimbabwe and you see that the dollar there at one time was worth, I think, a dollar forty U.S., and then at the end of their inflationary cycle, $100 trillion in Zimbabwe dollars was worth nothing. And to further that point, I have several of them I give out at the, at the money shows or the resource conferences I speak at. And so my mother-in-law was over here one day, and I gave her $100 trillion Zimbabwe dollar, and she took it in her hands, and she goes, Oh, if only it was real. And I said, It is. And she just didn't comprehend what I was saying to her. But I was trying to explain to her that there is no limit to the amount of zeros you can put on a piece of paper. But there is a limit to how much gold and silver you could take out of the ground. And it's fiscal responsibility. I mean, maybe I should give you my mission statement. And it's my mission statement is to teach and empower people to understand the benefits of an honest financial system. Gold and silver are not even in my mission statement. Because in theory, you could actually have a paper money system that works. I've never seen what it does over time. But even gold and silver standards can get corrupted over time because it doesn't come down to the gold and silver, like we talked about many times. They're the same mass anywhere in the universe. It's always got the human element. And the human element is if I have a bank that's a silver bank and I give out more certificates than there are silver to back it up, then I've cheated, I've lied, and I've not been honest. And, you know, the honest money thing is all about you don't have to accept anybody's promise. If you transact in physical metal, there's no worries. It's either you got the quarter or you don't, you got the ounce or don't, you got the 100 ounces or you don't. It's very simple. And that's what I like about it is it's, there's no trust factor involved. It's, it either is or it isn't. It's almost like pure math. You know, there's only one right answer. Have you got this many ounces of silver and gold or don't you? Let's say they've taken the step to invest. Um, I guess there's two different ways that I've heard um, silver and, and precious metal investments being talked about. And, and one is to either keep the metal and or just invest for later. So there's kind of two different important I don't know, outcomes to look at. And if you're talking to a new investor, they're going to want to know. I mean, are they purchasing the metal to keep? Or are they just investing and hopefully getting a return to cash in later? Good question. And I don't put a lot of thought into it. Money is a store of value. That's what that modern money, money has three functions. It's a medium of exchange. It's a method of accounting and a store of value. That's classic money. Modern money has two of those three elements. It's a medium of exchange, and it's a means of accounting, but it has no store of value. If you owned a $100 bill in 1950, and you held it under your mattress, and you pulled it out today, you haven't stored any value whatsoever. But if you had a gold coin in your mattress in 1950, and you pulled it out, your value has been maintained. So I would say it's both, and it's supposed to be both. Money is supposed to be a medium of exchange, so it's something you can spend now because you want that new coat or that new dress, or that gallon of gas, or you need your car repaired. And it's also future value. Because it's value-based money, you can have it both ways. You really can have it both ways, and money's supposed to serve that function. If it were honest money, you wouldn't need a financial planner anywhere in the United States, really, because you would know when you started working at age 20, then you retired at age, say, 60, 
that you had a lifestyle that required a thousand ounces of silver a year, let's say, that if you saved ten thousand ounces, you would have ten years of value saved from that point in your life on. But in today's modern world, if you go to a financial planner, they're going to tell you a bunch of gobbledygook, and they all believe it. You know, it's the belief versus the truth again. And they're going to say, well, you know, you're making 50000 a year. We're going to assume a 3% inflation rate. We're going to assume you can get 2% over the inflation rate for a real return of 2%, and that 2% is going to compound. And, blah, 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 blah. and at the end of your retirement, you need $1.4 million, and everyone will be happy. Well, what if we go the route of Zimbabwe? What's $1.4 million do for you then? So young people should understand, want to educate themselves. Don't take a word I'm saying. You know what I mean? I, want, uh, I don't even want them to. I would rather they, they look at me with total skepticism and go out on, you know, the Internet's probably the best place, but certainly go in a library and, you know, I couldn't tell you all the books I've read on in the financial arena, primarily in the metals, but other areas as well. And confirmed early on in my case of the destruction of, of, of money, monetary systems again and again and again. But, yeah, it serves both functions. I guess what I'd also like to know is, is how can other people um, learn more from you? Um, and if you want to share your website or any other um, ways for listeners to follow you, et cetera, because you definitely have some great advice for um, current investors and new investors. Well, the easiest way is um, my website. But before I do the website, I think the easiest way, especially for younger people, to get a silver education or a gold and silver would be to, again, use the Internet and Google some names. If you put in David Morgan Silver, if you put in David Morgan, you'll get nowhere. <laughs> but if you put in David Morgan Silver, you'll find a lot of stuff I've written over the last decade or more for free. Uh, to get educated, and that's just my perspective and my you know studies. A lot of it's based on fact, but it's a lot of opinion, and I'm usually very clear if it's fact or opinion. So that's a help for people. The website is silver hyphen or silver dash investor dot com. Also, write a paid newsletter called the Morgan Report, where I talk about the markets in a more in depth way. But I'd actually encourage most thirty year olds or younger to not necessarily get my private work uh, certainly they're welcome to it but it's really for more sophisticated investors and not that they're not I mean I'm sure there's some 30 year olds that knew, know more about finance than I did at 30 and I was you know pretty well studied at that point in my life but um, it's not for everybody and we deal a lot with money metals and mining money what we've been discussing this whole interview uh, metals uh, the commodity aspect of it, supply demand fundamentals, uh, new uses of silver, uh, a lot of that type of thing. And the mining, where you get to participate in the mining shares from the top tier down to some of the most uh, highly speculative penny stocks around. And I don't specialize in that area, although we do take a stab at some speculations. I primary focus my letter for serious investors, which is about serious money going into serious companies that have a strong balance sheet and an income statement because there is leverage in the metal. I mean, if gold stays at 1300 or higher from this point forward, and I'm not saying it will, but as an example, and the average cost for a major gold producer is $580 an ounce, you can see the amount of margins in that. And so these companies that are trading at earnings right now, multiples, can keep those same multiples uh, only by share appreciation. I mean, in other words, the share prices have got to go up vastly higher because they're undervalued right now relative to the, to the gold price. And there's usually a lag like that. So, you know, I, I know that stuff and I write about it and I try to give you, you know, opinion of my thoughts on it to help you be a better investor in the precious metals. But all of that said, it's still a paper asset. I mean, you can have the best gold stock in the world, but all you're holding is a piece of paper or a claim of a part of that business, and I like those businesses. But it doesn't negate in any way what I said earlier, which I teach, that everyone should have the real metal first. That's how you build a metals portfolio, because to readdress what we've already be, I've beaten to death is that you know gold and silver coins or bars are the only thing outside the matrix. When you're talking mining shares, be it a solid one or a speculative one, doesn't matter. You've got a counterparty risk involved. After covering all of um, the historical perspective um, on silver as well as your research, um, is it just as simple 
as go out and buy the rounds or the junk silver? It is, but there's just one caveat there. You've got to be careful who you're buying from. Years ago, I wrote a special report that I sold on the Internet, and I called it the Silver Bullion Dealers Report. And what I did was I took some of the best-known, best-advertised uh, gold and silver dealers on the web, on the Internet, and I knew who's who because I've been buying since I was pretty young. And I know who the bait-and-switch guys are that say, here's a very low bullion price for silver, and then they get you on the phone, and they say, you don't want that silver because you buy that silver, or gold especially, I mean, be more accurate. So you call up and say it's a great price on your gold bullion coins, and then the count the other party says, "Well, you don't really want that." Oh, I don't. Well, why not? Well, because the government might take it from you. You know, 1933 gold was confiscated. And then they go on this long pitch, and they scare the heck out of the new client, and the new client gets convinced that they don't want that kind of gold. They want this kind of gold, which gives a 30 percent premium to the gold dealer. So I call it bait and switch. They advertise a low premium gold coin at a very almost unbelievably good price, meaning there's really no markup. They're selling it basically at spot, and then they switch them into a very high markup, uh, quote-unquote, investment coin. So I just like that. So anyway, I did this bullion sales report. So it's a buyer beware. It disturbs me from the end. I certainly am human. I'm not perfect. But, you know, here it is. Supposedly a lot of them are the, quote-unquote, honest money movement. And a lot of these dealers, in my experience, aren't all that honest. In other words, to say just because gold was confiscated in the 30s, and really, well, well, to say it was confiscated in the 30s, you know, means it's going to happen again. I don't buy that argument at all. It just isn't logical. And I don't see the government confiscating gold or silver again. I really don't. But you ought to be careful. Use my 10 rules, Megan. I think that's something, you know, I want to, you know, pat myself on the back too much. But you can go to the website, silver-investor.com, get on the free email list. It won't cost you dime. You'll get the 10 rules of silver investing, and those will keep you out of trouble. 